Hi guys, welcome to Pixel Affair. It's Kobe here, and in today's video, we are going to recreate this particular text effect, this Fox text effect, and you can see it has this skill sort of looking effect on it. And this is an image I have in my gallery. Unfortunately, I've forgotten um, where I saved it from and the artist who created it. But later, if I find out who did it, I probably I'll add the, um, the the credits in the description of the video. But then we are going to create our own version of it, and after that, um, we will see if you get close and even use it to do um, like a little bit of animated a bit. So you can see in here, like the text is forming so let's actually get into cinema 4d and see how we'll create our own version of this text so i'm in cinema 4d so let's go ahead and start creating our text so the first thing i'll do is i'll create the text so i'll come into my text object and i'll create text right i'll come into the attribute manager of the text object tab and i'll change the text i'll type in f and i'll middle align it that's all then I'll actually change the font. You can use any font that you want, but I'll use this, I'll maintain this particular font and I'll change it to bold. I think bold should be fine. So the next thing we are going to do is to, we want to round in the text, right? So what you can do is you can come into the caps and use the round here and increase the size to round in it. But I don't want to use that because I want to also round in this side. You see up um, all these corners, I want to round in them as well. So I'm going to use the bevel to bevel it using the angle 90 angle. So I'll come into my deformers and I'll choose bevel deformer and I'll make it a child of the text. Right, you can see now it's beveling our edges, right? And the reason why it's beveling, it's, it's based on the angle. So any angle which is above um, 40 degrees will be bevel, right? So now let's increase the bevel so we feel like it's a bit round and in the bevel uh, the offset after the offset is like let's do it 10 and let's add a little bit of subdivision so that it gets smoother you know the next thing let me actually show display the shading so i'll change it to garage shading so that we see what's happening so maybe even the offset you can increase it to like probably 12 or I mean, I think 12 will be fine because you don't want it to intersect. So now let's assume this is the text that we want. Everything is fine for us right now. The next thing we are going to do, and with this, um, we will need Cinema 4D R26 to be able to have this particular feature I'm going to use. If you don't, then it means you have to manually um, make your text editable and segment it properly. So I'll come into my objects. And I'll look for remesh. So I'll choose remesh and I'll make the child the text a child of the remesh. And you can see it has remeshed our text and now it's giving us some nice um quads, clean quads, right? So that's what the remesh does, the advantage the remesh does. If you don't have the remesh, maybe you have to find a third-party plugin to do it. There is a plugin that can also do the remesh, or you have to manually um break down your text and segment it to get a clean mesh. If you want to follow along so now that i've added it to the remix i can actually maintain like this or i can increase it so i'll make it uh, the density of the remix mesh density i'll make it like say 200 you can always go in and change it whenever you want and after this we are literally done the next is to create a null object i'll put the remix in the null object and i'll come into my more graph menu so I can come into more graph and I'll choose poly effects and I'll make it a child of the null object as well. And now if I come into the poly effects attributes manager in the, in the transform, you can see the rotation, rotation P let's increase it to like say 15. And now it's actually, you see what we have now that we've increased the rotation let's actually come into the scale of the the transform and go to the scale and let's make the scale y probably two which i think is fine right maybe even the scale x like we can make it maybe 1.5 for now and after that we will come into our object and create a cloth sub 
um, cloth surface. And I'll make the null a child of the cloth surface. All right. And what the cloth surface does is that it gives our uh, um, polygons extra segments. But for now, I don't want the segment out. So I'll come into the attributes of the cloth surface and I'll take off the subdivision to zero. But I want to give it thickness. So if I come in here and I increase the thickness, to like say two, right? Let's say two is okay for now. The next thing we are going to do is to put in the um, subdivision surface, which is um, here. So I'll create a subdivision surface and I'll make this um, cloud surface a child of the subdivision surface. And now let me come to garage shading and you can see we have this simple, nice effect. And this is very, very simple to create. So I can come into the poly effects and probably increase, do this one like 25. Right, you can go ahead and play along to see what you can get. I can probably make this three if I want, or leave it 2.5. But basically, that's all you have to do to get this effect. You can go ahead and play with other stuff and all of them things. So, this is how I basically achieved it. Now, let's go to how I actually animated. And one thing, one good thing is that. It's live, so you can come in in the text. So I can select the text and I'll say, okay, F now. I don't want F, I want, let's see, S, right? And now it will take time to update. Now, because with the SEC, it looks wrong. That's because of the um, bevel. So sometimes you have to make sure the bevel don't intersect, right? So I have to reduce the offsets probably. To the point where I see it doesn't intersect, and now I think it should be fine, right? But if the polygons are intersecting now, the remesh will find it difficult to remesh it, and now that will affect it. So let's go back to our default, which is the F undo, undo, and now let's see how I actually animated the text. So to animate it, it's also simple. So all I'll do is I'll use the inheritance effector to animate it. So I'll go ahead and create um, a, a matrix object, right? And I want to let the skills or the um, polygons come from the top. So I'll move the matrix. In fact, I'll create a different thing else. I'll create a sphere and I'll make the matrix object. I'll change the mode to object and i'll make the sphere i'll drag and drop it to the object field and now i'll move the sphere, sphere rather upwards all right so now we are here and now i'll come into the matrix and come down into the count and i'll make it like say 500 which is it should be fine so that's all we have to do we are, now i'll go ahead and hide the matrix i don't need it we just want to use the inheritance effector for it. So now what I'm going to do is I'll come into my poly effects and I'll come to more graph effectors and I'll choose inheritance effector. Now inheritance effector, if you come to the attributes, the effector tab, it will ask us which object do we want our polygons to inherit, right? Then I'll drag in and drop the matrix, right? Now you can see immediately I dropped it. You can see the morph motion option is in, um, enabled. So I'll check it. And I can see all our polygons have shifted into the where um, the matrix matrix are, right? So all we have to do now is use a fall off to animate it. So I'll come into my fields and I'll use a linear fall off. I'll change it the direction to minus y to see. No, actually, I'll change it to plus y. And now if I move it, you can see it's bringing our um, object in smoothly. So that's basically how I also animated the, the um, polygons coming in and out. It's quite simple and a very nice effect. It's something I saw and I found it interesting. And I said, let me try and see if I can recreate it. And if eventually it was, I was able to, I mean, I got something closer, not exactly, because if you look at um, what I have and 
the image itself. I mean, there's a bit of disparity, but it's similar idea and similar effect. I don't know if it's Sigma 4D that the person used, or even if it's Sigma 4D, the same strategy that the person used, or I don't know, but I feel like we got something um, closer. So you can see this is the scene I animated and it's quite a um, simple one. So I did the F and I, dupl I duplicated it. I, you know, so we have the F, um, F, O, X. All of them have their own um, no and everything is different. Let me actually go ahead and disable the X and the F for us to see how it plays. So that it plays quicker for us to see how everything looks like. So now if I hit play, it should be a bit faster for us to see what's going on. Let me actually take off the, um, the camera. And if I hit play, you can see our um, O is forming and that's the same thing that I used. So if I come into the O, you can see we have um, the matrix and where is the um, sphere here is the sphere if I go out you can see the sphere is somewhere up here and one thing I did with the sphere is that with it the sphere is actually rotating so whilst the thing is coming in you can see I set a keyframe on the coordinates it's rotating so whilst it's coming it's sort of um rotating and that gives it a little bit of some nice look when the things are coming so that's basically all I did and after that I rendered it nothing special apart from this apart from um, adding textures and normal doom light to render it nothing special that I did so I hope this was useful and you learned something from it um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one and if there's any feedback or any comment please leave a comment in the um, comment section or feedback thank you once again see you in the next one bye